Oh, oh, pardon me. Wrong door. Wrong, wrong door. Wrong door. Uh, hey, you got another door around here anywhere? Oh, no, you don't. No. Oh, this is the only one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How's it going? Yeah. Uh, pardon me. Is this, is this cats? I take it by that laugh, it is not. Okay, where am I? Hey, could you give me a little, oh, hang on there, hang on. Oh, it's Weber, not Weber. <laughs> Pardon me, my mistake. Pardon me, forgive me. Yeah, well, that's much more interesting, you know. Hey, do you guys know that this opera begins with the note C? I mean, isn't that interesting? Yeah. The whole orchestra plays it. Oh, there they are. I'm a little kittens in a kennel. How you doing tonight? Yeah, <laughs> good to see you. Yeah, the whole orchestra plays it, and it, uh, it gradually swells. A long crescendo. It gets louder. It gets stronger. It is, well, it's the beginning of the world. But it is not the Big Bang. Nope. No, it's more of an earthquake of something coming up from down below, from deep inside the earth. C is the foundation of the world. C has always been here. It is us who at one point in time was not here, and it is us who at some point in time ain't gonna be here again. But music, well, music, is forever. Give my hand here. Come on, give my hand. Oh, Hey, Maestro, can I continue? Will you give me permission? All right, now you guys are about to hear the overture, right? As we all know from sixth grade orchestra class, the overture has the entire opera encoded into it. I mean, we might call it a, uh, a synopsis today, right? Or, uh, I don't know, a teaser. Hey, now that's a good word. I'm gonna call this a teaser. <laughs> All right, now, for the lazy audience member out there, I don't know, maybe like you, just wants to sit there, kick back, listen to the music, and not read the nice title cards that are gonna be right there, let me explain to you, as succinctly as possible, what this opera is about. Now, Der Freischutz is about, uh, hang on, no, don't tell me, I know this one. Uh, well, it's about doping, isn't it? No, no, hear me out. It's about doping. It's about how to become successful without having earned it. Yeah. It's about seven men and uh, just two women. Yeah. It's about seven bullets and about seven notes. I mean, someone in the orchestra's got to laugh at that at some point in time. I don't know. Anyway, let's listen to the teaser to Carl Maria von Weber's opera, Der Freischutz.
If I had my way about it, I would end this opera with Casper's punishment. I mean, I swear to God, I would. And I would do the same in Don Giovanni, by the way. I would have the gates of hell just open up and swallow Donnie whole, the end. But evil, of course, must be punished. God, isn't that boring, Victor? Oh, yes. It's just so black and white, isn't it? Consequently, this is why I'm wearing red. Sometimes you just want something a little different, don't you? <laughs> okay, yes, yes, yes. Too much intervention into the music, they say, disquiets the spirit of the composer, and he might take vengeance on the, uh, on the singers. Opera is ruled by superstition. Now, the bass. The bass. The bass is afraid of little black pussycats. Yeah. The baritone's afraid of meeting a redhead on the way to the theater. Uh, the soprano is afraid of uh, waking up on the left side of the bed in the morning. The tenor never makes his bed before a concert. And the conductor is afraid of abs absolutely nothing. Nope. Conductor is afraid of nothing. Everyone else is afraid of the conductor. Yeah. Oh, the conductor. He is fate. The devil is really not that bad of a guy. He's a good guy. Well, at least in der Freischutz he is. Okay. Yes, yes, he makes some deals for people's souls, but it is God who is the client here, isn't it? And God is not content with damaged goods. No, God's a snob. Where's the devil? Now, devil's a true Democrat. Yep. First come. First serve, devil works with anyone, treats everyone exactly the same. Both God and the devil want your souls. But here's the real difference. See, according to God, the people who are bad by their nature, oh, I don't know, take me for an example, are sure to be condemned. I was a lost soul from the get-go. Didn't stand a chance. So I definitely prefer a deal with the devil. You just need a damned fine contract, lawyer. Oh, and uh, read the fine print, huh? OK, take five.
music school I used to play with myself in the oh. bathroom during my lunch break <laughs> it just happened the bathroom was next to Mr. Schwarz's chorus room yeah the chorus met on Tuesdays and Thursdays so one Thursday I came to the bathroom yeah. I had a picture with me yeah. I had ripped it out of my magazine at the supermarket the picture had I'll spare the details no, 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 but it aroused no, 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 me no, no, no. When you're 18, you can do a dual phone book if you're in the right mood. Well, that's true, yep. And that picture was, it was hot. I can still see it, but you know, I couldn't finish. So I've been sitting there for like 10 minutes, which is like a fucking lifetime for me. So I started thinking, what's wrong? Yeah, what's wrong with you, huh? And then I realized the girl scores didn't meet that day because Mr. Schwartz got sick. So, you know, I couldn't do it without hearing them. <laughs> now I can't listen to more than two girls vocalizing. I just get too excited. <laughs> it's so hard to listen to their fashions because they're all those chorus girls. Oh, sorry, oh, I don't want to offend anybody. It's just the way my fucking body works. No. As it does. Anyhow. <laughs> Furchtbar steigt sie die Wilden vor. Bleib oder Konne, steigt es rot in deinem Rot. Ich muss verzeihen, dass der Schluss gelingt. Dann ich muss verzeihen, dass der Schluss gelingt. Ich muss verzeihen, dass der Schluss gelingt. Ein Kerker 
opera always look better than men, don't they? They have these fabulous dresses all the time. Whereas what do guys have to choose from? Well, let's see here. We have uh, tuxedo and uh, tails. I mean, even a waiter wears tuxedos. A good set of tails is hard to find. And let's just be honest here, they do not suit every body type. <laughs> Jammertei, er darf nichts als Blatt und Weib, trägt der Stoff nicht Rauben. Warum bis zum letzten Hoch setz ich auf Gott Bacchus Bauch meine festen Narben, meine festen Oh, let it out. Come on, come on. Yesterday, I had sex with my wife. Bingo. <laughs> I don't like to talk in bed. No. All that, who, yeah, yeah, give it to me. Oh, give it to me. It's, it's just not my thing. No, it's not. I, I never want to hear anything like that from her, and I've never said anything like that to her. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Recently, she asked me to talk dirty to her. Oh. Call her a bitch. Oh. <laughs> you know, we've been married for 10 years. Yeah. And I had no idea she was into that. Wow. Eins ist eins und drei sind drei. Nun hat ihr noch zweierlei. So lebt's auf der Spiel und werfe Lust und ein Kind mit runder Brust hilft so Leben hilft so Leben Come on, what do you got? So I sat down, wrote a few lines and memorized them. We memorized them. What? Things you do for a happy and healthy marriage. Yeah. Yeah. So she listens to everything I had to say and then she asked me to lower my voice. Well, I started to whisper, but she was like, no, deeper. Deeper. <laughs> she wanted me to talk dirty to her like a baritone. Oh. Damn, that's terrible. Terrible. I am a tenor. My voice is an integral part of who I am. Yes, it is. It is me. It's my life. I don't have much else going for me, and, and she asks me to lower it? Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guy. You should come look at this. There's a whole website out there, sexy baritones. Yeah, no tenors. Nope, not a single one. You should come look. Come on. Come on.
Schuld muss ich bezahlen. Was feilt dem falschen Glück mein Haupt? Ich in des Zufalls 
das Schicksal. today for a performance of Carl Maria von Weber's opera, Der Freischutz. Yep, it's, uh, it's his night, yeah. Now, little known fact, when Carl Maria was about 20 years old, a great misfortune befell him. You see, his father was a lithographist. He uh, printed lithographs. 
And he kept all the equipment there at their house in uh, Breslau, including nitric acid. And he kept this nitric acid in green glass bottles. Now, I don't know about you, I tend to keep a nice uh, Pinot Noir in green glass bottles, but it's the Weber household, I guess they do things that way. Anyway, one night, young Carl Maria wants a bit of a bump. Yeah. He goes downstairs, he grabs a bottle in the dark, he opens it up, and without knowing what it is, he takes a sip, and all of a sudden, oh, oh my god, oh, oh, a terrible, terrible pain in my throat. Young Carl Maria falls unconscious. But, but he is saved when someone gives him a nice glass of milk to drink. Isn't that a nice poetic end to the story? Yeah. I mean, he lost his voice, of course. Would never speak normally again, couldn't sing, yeah. But now just think about this. So this guy, who drank nitric acid, wrote De Freischutz. And 150 years later, Tom Waits, yes, an American, wrote an album entitled The Black Rider, based on the plot of Weber's opera. And he sang those songs with his hoarse voice. Oh. Yeah. You know, the kind of voice you have after you've abused it with nitric acid for about 35 years. And so I'm just wondering here, now, did Waits know what happened to Weber? What do you think? The flash pan hunter, he sways with the wind, his rifle. It's the sound of the morning. Each sulfurous bullet must have its own wit. Each cartridge, it comes with a warning. Beware of elaborate telescopic meats. They're going to find their way back to the forest. For where I'm can't wait to be, peg legs crawl. As the briar is strangling the rose back down. Hero, I learn so much from you every time we're on the same stage. Here's a lesson for you then. You have to be vigilant in opera. Yeah. You mean COVID? COVID isn't the half of it, girl. Oh, I know, you have to pay attention to the conductor. No, he doesn't matter. Only beginners pay attention to him. <laughs> Don't leave your dressing room door open though. Do not do that. Are you afraid of something? Yes, of broken glass in my shoes, of poison in my coffee, of a knife in my back. I always take a mirror with me when I go on stage, so I can look back without turning around. Well, but these are just superstitions. They're not superstitions, they're safety precautions. You give presents to newcomers. A tenor gives one to a tenor, a soprano to a soprano. So the newcomer doesn't steal your fame or your part. Well, you didn't give me anything. You want to know why, sweetheart? I mean, honestly, I mean, how careless do you have to be to write an opera with two female leads, both of them sopranos? I mean, even their names both start with A. We have Agatha and... Forgive me, forgive me, faux pas. Agatha and Enchin. One is merry, one is sad. It's like 
one character just hacked into two.
you know, this opera tries its hardest to be about love, doesn't it? But our love always has our back, and God will always save us. But in the end, it's just about the love of ourselves. I'm a real professional. Yeah. I know how to look my colleague in the eye and pretend yeah. that I love him. Yeah. But opera's not about this. It's about being the center of attention, about receiving applause and feasting on it. It's about making everyone believe you are the best. I used to look up to her. God, I wish she could just see, see herself. She's not a legend anymore. She's a dusty history book. Alive, but just barely. She's a boring, prideful bitch who looks down on everybody. Und der 
I used to love rehearsals. I loved searching for something, discovering possibilities, exploring unexpected aspects of your own personality. I loved all of it, meeting new people, looking at them, figuring out who they were. And then one day, everything just felt old. She is suspicious of women and dismissive of men. She's too scared to admit that she's not the best anymore. She's too scared to get out of her comfort zone because the tricks she's learned over the past years, they're easy and familiar and they work for her. Every time I see her, I want to punch her in the face because I don't want her future to be mine. What do you have to say about that? Opera is not what it used to be. My colleagues are worthless. The audience only wants to look at Instagram models with millions of subscribers. And I know all too well that this world has a short memory that can't remember a face, let alone a voice. There's no future.
und grill scheint der Nachtluft sich zu freuen. Doch weh, täuscht mich nicht mein Ohr. Das klingt wie Schritte, tot aus der Tannenmitte, kommt aus der Ruhe. Hier ist er. giving me a new contract. <laughs> he just passed by me in the hall. He, he couldn't even look me in the eye. Doesn't mean anything. He never looks you in the eye. You're not a real person to him, just a walking, singing throat. Getting out there on stage becomes so hard. I'm not giving up that easily. It became unbearably difficult for me. I'm going to sing no matter what. What would you ask the devil for in return for your soul? Not to be afraid. Of what? 
of losing my voice, of my career ending, of growing old and being forgotten, of my agent not calling, of the younger competition, of next season's empty schedule, of waking up on the left side of the bed. I'm leaving. Me? Never ever. I don't that oh, ow. Damn. All right, all right, don't worry. Don't, I, am the, I don't believe in this superstitious stuff any more than you do. Yeah. Of course, I do happen to personally know this one musician who dropped his score and didn't sit on it, and, uh, and he died. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, maybe there's no connection, right? But what if there is? <laughs>
I know what you're thinking, but I am not wearing a gray suit. Nope. This is just the night. No, it's the night vision. It makes everything look the same. You know, at night all cats are gray kind of thing. It's not a cat! Get out of here. Come on. He didn't mean that, Victor. No, no. We like the night, don't we? Yeah. At night, chaos reigns. Yeah. No takers. No one got that one. All right. Now that is a line from a truly scary movie. Because we like to be scared, don't we? It arouses us. And ever since he was a kid, now Weber knew exactly where the scariest place in the world was. The Wolf's Glen. In essence, a mass grave. A pit where the bodies of soldiers killed in war were thrown. This is why he wanted Max and Casper to meet there, after all. At the, uh, gates of hell. I'll shoot the moon right out of the sky for you, baby. I'll be the pennies on your eyes for you, baby. I want to take you out to the fair. I want to kiss you and never be there. I'll shoot the moon right out of the sky for your baby. I'll shoot the moon for you.
Castro. I'm so grateful that you noticed me and trusted me with this part. I won't let you down. I'll do everything you say. I always knew that my place is not in that goddamn chorus. Maestro. 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 What do you want? The distance between the spot where I stood in the chorus and where the soloists were singing downstage was seven steps. I know that for sure. I measured it. I'd stay in the theater at night to walk that path on the empty stage. Oh, 
Maestro with great respect. I was the first to show up for rehearsals. I asked questions. The chorus made fun of me. And when he noticed me and trusted me with a small part, the chorus got even worse. But I was one step closer to my dream. And when I took my bow after the opening night, downstage with the soloists, away from the chorus, I realized that I was going to do everything. Everything not to lose that place. Keep your eyes on me. Sie dort in See. Next scene. best agent. I've got a great body with abs. And I still only watch him. Only his pattern. I need him. He's my hero, my idol. I'm never going back to that goddamn envious chorus. From now on, I'm only singing here. I'm seven steps closer to fame. Now back to the real opera. Schütze dir im Dunkeln wacht. Samiel, Samiel, hab acht. Steh mir bei in dieser Nacht, bis der Zauber ist vollbracht. Salbe mir so kraut als Blei. Segne es sieben, neun und drei. Dass die Kugel tüchtig sei. Samuel, Samuel, herbei. Eins. 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 Drei. Drei. 
that? Seven. I'll never be one of your lot again. Never. Seven. Seven. Maestro, I can't. Ah, to hell with you. <laughs> try to answer this question as honestly as you possibly can. What would you do with a magic bullet? Huh? Any takers? Now, okay, if I had a magic bullet, I would use it on all of the audience members who do not silence their phones during the performance. Please, you are welcome to be as immersed in your telephone as you wish while we're playing. Just don't be playing on your telephone yourself. Oh, God, there it is. Makes my blood boil. Every time a phone rings, my magic bullet's for you. Okay, cut it out. Come on now. One. You need a magic bullet for the people who are late for rehearsal. Yeah, um, Why am I on time? I don't know. Why am I always on time? Fine. And everybody else enters the room in a way as if to say that they have an exciting life and that is why they're late. Yeah. 
Well, darlings, I have a pretty exciting life myself, but I put it on hold when I have to come here. I sit down, I open the score, and I sing. Oh. Very nice. Number two. All right, let's... Oh, you got one? All right, give me, give me. Well, I'd use it at a shooting gallery. Right. I'd get all my friends and family to watch. Yeah. The thing is, I never learned how to shoot. I just fire and hit the bullseye oh. and win some teddy bear. Yeah. I'd amaze everybody. It'll be a great night. Yeah. A magic night. Oh. <laughs> yeah, number three. All right. What are you? Uh, I'd give it to the police. Let them decide what to do yeah, with it. Yeah, I bet you would. Yeah. yeah. Number four. All right. What do you got? Come on. Okay. Okay. Uh, who do I, hey, how about you? Well, I don't think people believed in magic in Weber's time. Okay. Everybody knew that a magic bullet is just a symbol, a symbol of privilege. Okay. The rich have the magic bullets, and they cast them themselves. Okay. Rich people's bullets always hit the bullseye, and poor people's bullets always miss the target. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a number, which one are we? A number five. All right, come on. I'd come, rather not answer the Just question. give me something. Come on, come on. Let it out, let it out. Okay. Okay. I wish... There was a magic bullet. Well, there is. That's what I'm and asking. And that everybody in the room knows that there is a guy who has a magic bullet. Uh-huh. And I want that person to be me. <sighs> yeah, that's my kind of guy. Uh, that's number six. <laughs> All right, give it to me. I'd like to have a magic bullet just so I could use it. Yeah. Fired into a wall. Yeah. Into a bottle. Yeah. In the air. Yeah. So there is no more magic bullet. So there is no more temptation. Because that's the whole point of art. It's about practice, repetition, yeah. mastery. Yeah. Right, Maestro? Oh. Yeah. Let the magic bullet fly. Fly away forever. Yeah. Number seven. Now, I am not a superstitious man. But... There is a light in the forest. There is a face in the tree. I'll pull you out of the chorus. And the first one, always free. You can never go a hunting with just a, a flintlock and a hound. You won't go home with a bunting. If you blow a hundred round, it takes much more than wild courage. Or you'll hit the tattered clouds. You must have just the right bullets. And the first ones, always free. You must be careful in the forest. Broken glass and rusty nails. If you're to bring home something for us, I have bullets. one of these bullets and they shine just like a spoon to have 60 silver wishes well that's a small price to pay they'll be your private little fishes and they won't ever swim away i just want you to be happy that's my only little wish i'll fix your wagon and your musket and your spoon will have its dish for i shudder at the thought of your poor empty hunter's pouch, so I'll keep the wind from your barrel. And bless the roof on you. Divas. Ever
everything about female singers tells us that they're divas. They have these magnificent dresses cut from the finest fabrics. They have crinolines, chignon, décolletage, massive rings, furs, boas, diadems, tiaras, faker than Donald Trump's hair most of the time. But some of them have the real thing. They have as many costume changes as appearances on stage. And your last dress will be white.
is immersed in wedding preparations. But she's still so sad for no apparent reason.
away from the stage now. I'm allergic to them. Yay, Chemina! <laughs> now, do you know that in many cultures, white is the color of death? Yeah, in many cultures, a white dress, for example, would be accompanied by a funerary wreath of red roses, or better yet, white lilies. Lilies are used at funerals because they're so good at masking the stench of death. I'm not superstitious because it brings bad luck. It's a quote, you know. Opera is a monster. It eats your heart, your life, and your soul. But I love to be part of something big and powerful, magnificent and mysterious. I have to be in the wings on stage left for the entire overture and listen to it from the very beginning, even if I don't have to be on stage until much later. Otherwise, I'll lose my voice. And it has to be in the wings on stage left. That's really important. I always shave my legs before a premiere. Seriously, really. <laughs> Otherwise, I just know it. Everything will go wrong. Also, it doesn't matter how small or unimportant your role is. Someone in the chorus, way in the back, can easily wreck the whole picture. I've had a passion for singing ever since I was a child. I used to ignore it, but in the end, this passion took me out of my boring life and brought me here. When I'm part of the opera, I can escape from being me. You know, it's not a superstition, but if I'm doing something really well and something I really love, one day it might disappear or be taken away. 
The chorus is the foundation of the opera. Chorus means people, it's normality. But from our perspective, opera is insane. It's the only art where a man with a knife stuck in his back can sing, and even in the right key, if you're lucky. <laughs> Superstitions, okay. I don't cut my toenails until the premiere. So what? I have special underwear, which I always put on for a premiere. Once I forgot to put it on, and I'd rather not tell you what happened next. Superstition? No, more, no, more like stupid station. I'm suspicious of opera itself, especially operas about devils and ghosts, all those German old-fashioned operas. You never know how they might change your life. Finale. Now, as I already told you, I would end this opera differently, but Weber, just like Mozart, decided he needed a nice moral at the end of his story. And so, out of nowhere, we get man number seven of the opera, the Hermit. This guy comes on stage, he changes the whole finale, I mean, he gives us a happy ending. I mean, he's like, he's like some audience member who bought an expensive ticket and then demands a wedding at the end of Romeo and Juliet. Oh, what? Too many spoilers for you. Come on. Anyway, here we are at the marksmanship competition where Max must fire his final and fateful shot. Yeah, the whole uh, village is there. Come on in, everybody. Come on in a little faster, including man number six of the opera, Prince Otakar, also a baritone. Prince Otakar orders Max to fire at a white dove. Max raises his rifle, which has the seventh, Need I remind you with a cursed bullet in it? At this moment, Agata walks in. There's a shot. Agata falls to the ground. I knew something was going to happen. Somebody shouted, Agata. Nobody ever calls me by my character's name. 
So I turned around to look back just before stepping onto stage. Then a thought hit me. I won't sing. But I still had to go on stage. I didn't realize what was happening. I was in my dressing room, changed into a velvet jacket, and was eating noodles. I need a good meal before going on stage for the finale. And uh, I better not hear the girls' chorus. You all know what that does to me. <laughs> and then suddenly over the intercom, silence. I saw a furious face on the monitor backstage. He was angry because I wasn't together with the orchestra, but nobody except him noticed. It was that dress with the long train. I hated that dress right from the very first moment. I knew it was going to kill me. And that wreath of lilies, who thought of making it out of real lilies? I'm allergic to them. She fell on her face. That was a disgrace if I ever saw one. You don't get up after that. And I'm sure she won't. And I think I can sing all of her rows. Lilies are my favorite flowers. And I love it, love it when they're real flowers and not just props. I took a couple of steps downstage. I don't remember how many. Seven. Exactly seven steps. It was me who called her. For some reason, I called her by her character's name and not her real name. Maybe because of the redhead guy at the stage door. But it was not me who pushed her. My clumsy partner pushed me, and now he's saying it was an accident, it of course. It was an accident, I swear by God. Yeah, I, I did push her, but, but it was not on purpose. I, I got dizzy from stage fright, and I'm clumsy. Of course, nobody's believing me now. It was as if everything happened in slow motion, as if I could see myself from the audience. There's the dress catching on a nail in the stage and me losing balance and falling a meter away from the orchestra pit. I've been on and on about that nail. I stepped onto it too. I even tried to pull it out, but it was so old, I could only pull it halfway out. I've told you. There's me lying motionless and the music dying away and silence. I fell. I died. That's it.
Ich sah in Klaus dabei hier stehen. Contract, buddy. Thank you. 
Hand, so wie 